Difference Makers, welcome back to the Difference Maker podcast. We got Jeff Lavecchio here again. You've seen him before. If you haven't, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why you haven't. Um, Jeff, always a pleasure to have you on, and I'm super excited for this one today. Yeah, man. it's just, I go on a lot of podcasts. Yours is always one of my favorites, bro. I love... <laughs> we, we're on the same wavelength all the time. I love it. We always jam on something good, right? And it's like... I wish I wish we had some of the combo that we were recording before a little bit in certain parts of it, but dude, this is going to be good because we'll um we'll get into the whole part of like, yes, we'll talk a little training because Jeff is into training and obviously that's what he does and where he's at. But you offer so much more, man, than just talking about training topics and so on. So I want to start with this because this was something that Chris and I were talking about my brother um, before we hopped on too, and we're saying like, you know, it's not too late that this episode is launching in the new year for a lot of people to kind of realize, but we have this big thing, obviously always people talk about, you know, resolutions and it's not good and blah, blah, blah. But our thing is this, right? It's like, if you're going to have a resolution for the year, commit to one. And that one resolution should just be, don't settle on anything. If you, if you literally lived a year of just not settling, life would be 20 times different for you. Right. I want to talk about what you were just saying about those five things, what we were just saying before. This is, I think, very important for people tuning in because we talk about it as a master system where it's just know those anchored items you do each day, but you articulated it beautifully on the whole vision board part or not the vision board, writing things down on a board and so on. Give us your process on that. Yeah, I, I found from a super young age that the more that I wrote things down, I'm a big mantra guy. I'm a big mm -hmm. sticky note guy. I had actually somebody texted me on the way home right before this, who's a, a trainer here in St. Louis. And he was saying, I'm thinking about doing a vision board. What do you think? And I was like, hell yeah, dude, I look at these types of things as bumper lanes when you're bowling. Yeah. You go bowling. Yeah. You got a good shot. You're going to hit pins, but you're also going to hit gutter balls. You know, if For you're sure. writing things down constantly, your goals, your aspirations, your non-negotiables mm -hmm. for every single day, like I have to do these things and they don't have to be home runs. Because what it is, is discipline is a muscle. Mm -hmm. And if you're flexing it every day and you're consistently hitting the things that you need to, to hit, those will that will bleed into the rest of your life. Because not only are you building confidence by hitting that non-negotiable or three or five non-negotiables yes. that you choose that make you your best you, not only are you hitting those, you're doing the things you need to do, not only are you flexing that discipline muscle, you're also building self-respect and self-confidence oh, by doing these over and over and over. Yep. And man, you know? even, okay, it's funny. Like, okay, just to hit on that, I got to pull up the stat in a sec for this. Did you hear about that ridiculous stat that just came out on um, the surveys and people of self-belief or respect, like, se like self-image that uh -uh. came out? Man, I don't know, like what people want to classify it as, but it was like an all time low when they did this study, they surveyed like workspaces and just asking like, how do you see yourself? Whatever. I think it was something crazy. I got to find the stat on it, but like an overwhelming amount of people and the view they had on themselves was beyond negative, right? Who they thought they could be, what they believe they could do, all that kind of great stuff. And they're like, they traced it back. They're like, so what makes you believe this? Like, why do you come up with it? And the one resounding answer, man, was the failure to show to myself daily that I'm a different person, right? And you look at that and it's like, shit, like you really think about what that is, right? Failure to show myself daily I'm a different person. It's exactly what you're talking about when it comes to discipline, right? The fact that people, I think one of the biggest disservices, man, even looking at this, because we talk about this a lot too. So we teach kids in school how to do math, science, English all that. But we don't teach them from a young age how to build their self-belief. We don't teach them. And there are principles, right? Like, like you're talking about, following through, discipline, how to control your mind. And it's like, you look at some of the places in different parts of the world that aren't North America, how they value the mind more, like India, Asia, like how they really or, or value that part of their life. And you see like 
people seem to live a little bit more peaceful over there at times, right? People seem to, at least with themselves, people seem to be a little bit more one with who they are, understanding what they need to do. I'm curious your thoughts on it because we've spoken about it before in length. You deal with a lot of athletes, but you know we were just talking about that one client you had who you helped pay off and different things in their life and so on. What's that direct connection that you feel maybe is missing between the physical training world and the mental training world where let's be real. Like I know if a guy goes to see Jeff Levecchio, he's going to come back to Matt Calderoni feeling way more confident. And Jeff Levecchio knows if he goes and sees Matt Calderoni and talks to him about anxiety and goes to see Jeff Levecchio, he's going to be way better. Where do you feel the disconnect is in between maybe the two worlds and how would you suggest athletes kind of mend that? Oh, I think too many people separate the world, but it's all the same. Like, yes. like going there in your mind is the same thing as going there in your body. There's so many studies that show the power of visualization and how it literally works, like scientifically proven that it works. So like that just shows you the power of your mind and that can work for you and it can work against you. Every totally. athlete knows if you're not confident, you're not playing well. And if you are confident, you are playing well. Like it's, it doesn't matter how much training you do. If you have confidence, you play well. Now that's multifactorial to how you get to be confident. And I think if the simplest way to break that down is through preparation. All right. So we, we know to be better at whatever sport we're playing, we have to have confidence. Okay. How do we get confidence? I look at, how do I go into a game confident? Well, you got to go in prepared. Okay, let's. I reverse engineer everything. If I yeah. have a goal, I reverse engineer. So if the goal is to be confident, we know that confidence comes from getting to that game time and you are feel prepared. Well, how do you prepare? Then you break that down even further. It's going to be your recovery and your sleep. Are you doing the right things there? Uh, how is your nutrition, hydration? Are you doing the right things there? Your details in practice. Are you doing the right things there? And then like your study, you know, are you studying film? Are you talking to your coaches? Are you taking notes? Are you watching games? And then the last part is self-talk. Self-talk is everything. I have a rule in my gym that you cannot say I can't. You are not allowed to say I can't in my gym. Like you, you got to find a way. You got to find a way to say I'm going to yep. get better. I'm going to work on it. I need to work on it because uh, I most people, they don't, they understand how important reps are in practice, but the way that you speak to yourself and the way that you talk to your, about yourself to others, how many yes. athletes have come to you and they're self-deprecating and they're like, oh, I'm not that fast or I'm the slow guy. No, pff, I'll slap them in the face. You do not say that <laughs> because our brains cannot discern if it's me saying words, joking around, being negative about myself, or if somebody else is saying those negative words about myself. It all affects you. So you have to look at it as a whole, and everything has to be in the same direction. You can't have things pushing and pulling. Yes. And man, even to go off that too, like, so there's a really cool graphic. Chris and I were thinking of actually putting it on our Instagram, and we definitely will after saying this now, but just of how, so how actions, so we always say identity-based actions work, right? Everything in life, man, is a result of the person you believe that you are. So we see it as a tip of the iceberg approach. So if you could picture it, right? It's like, you know, those pictures when the tip of the iceberg's there in the water and then there's everything yeah. underneath. Okay. Yeah. So you look at the tip of the iceberg and it goes identity. So who you believe you are perception. So based on who you believe you are is how you're going to see situations, which is how you're going to take actions on situations, which is how you're going to get results where most people play the game wrong is that they just look at actions to results and be like, well, you know what? If I want to get this result, these are the actions I need to take, but they don't do the work like you said on the self-talk, all that kind of goodness. And the problem is you get self-sabotagers, right? Yep. So it's like, okay, so how do you change this whole thing on identity? It's like, well, let's talk about it for a sec. Beliefs are your identity. So if you could picture it, right, underneath this tip of the iceberg part, and you look at the actual ice part under the water, it's all beliefs based on past experiences. Think about it, okay? If you're told when you're five years old, you're stupid and this is who you are, you're gonna create now references, which is what build beliefs. You're gonna have that idea in your head. You're gonna start matching it because that's what we do as human beings. Then you're gonna start repeating that over and over like you're saying self-talk and all of a sudden, boom, it becomes your identity, right? And it's like, you look at that man and it's like, okay, you really wanna do some work this year. We put a whole episode out on this for our podcast. It's like, Learn how to take control over your belief systems. Dude, think about it. When was the last time you questioned what you believe in? I mean, I, I yeah. all the time. All the right? time. You have because to. Because I'm like, I want to be better. Is there a better way? Absolutely. Is there a better way? 
Yeah, man. And it's like, you look at this stuff and it's like, I just, this is where it kind of irks me sometimes when it comes to athletes. And it's like, okay, the mental side, it's going to figure itself out sometimes. It's like, well, hold on, man. Like if, it, if you're leaving it to figuring it out, usually that's when things already have broken. And it's like, it's the same way that some people get, you know, kind of ignorant towards the physical side too. It's like, well, I've been training in the gym for so long. I can do it on my own. It's like, well, there's probably going to be details that you miss 90% of the time. Right. Just saying. Right. So it's like, even looking at it, dude, when it comes down to a preparation, confidence, merging of it, I was talking to a, a really, really, really smart friend that I had. And he's like, Matt, if you've ever looked at how like ancient figures in history have developed science and stuff, it always came in combination with art. Art and science were always together in history, right? So you see like a Galileo. Galileo was notorious for that. You look at a Da Vinci, notorious for that. It's kind of like you said, where all of a sudden now we've seen in the recent years, you know, past couple, however many hundreds of years, people separate that. And it's like the problem you look at now with it and you see, it's kind of to your point, man. It's like, well, I know that an athlete can't be confident if their nutrition sucks, but their physical is on. They're going to break Right. Or they're and not, like, or they're not at a hundred. And like, if you're not at a hundred, what, you, why, why are you doing it? What is your, what are your goals? Dude, even with that, like, this is kind of good to talk on too and seeing it. It's like, I want to know your thoughts on this, but we always, we were saying this a lot recently. It doesn't matter the targets you set literally like successful people have the same targets as unsuccessful people, right? You're a business owner. You want to make a million bucks. Okay. You've seen that you um, are an athlete and you want to be a top scorer on the team. Some guys get it. Some gals get it. Some girls or some guys don't. Some girls don't. Right. It's like, OK, so why is that? It's like, well, successful people, when they've really done studies on them, they've broken it down, have two things that differ compared to the targets. There's a purpose and there's actions that they take. Actions they take that they commit to are way different than those who are unsuccessful. Right. So like looking at it with you. Yeah, you're going to riff on this in a sec. But life athletes, anybody, man, let's talk about that. Let it vent. Dude, I, I love it because I always say like intention drives results. So, you know, the people you're talking about who say, okay, I want to make a million dollars, but then every single thing they do all day long, they're not thinking about the intent. They're not putting intention behind it. They're kind of going through the motions. Whereas that person who does hit the million, they are putting intention behind everything. Let's say it's a, a supplement store, right? Like you're trying to get to a million. Well, when every person walks in your doors, are you shaking their hand? Are you knowing their names? Are you writing their names down? Are you memorizing their names? Are you following them on social media to learn about their life? So next time they come in, you can say, Hey, how's your daughter? I saw she had a recital block. Boom. You got a customer for life right there. Yep. You know, be, you're putting intention into every little thing you do to be better, to go above and beyond. And, and it's the same thing with athletes, the same thing with any business. It's like, are you, literally thinking like reverse engineering. Okay. I want, I want to make a million dollars. Well, how do I get there? What are those steps I have to take? And then are you hitting them every day? And too many people, they just look at the big goal, but they don't hit the little tiny step, the little tiny step, the little tiny step. I call it building brick by brick. Like every single day, you got to do everything you can with intention to bring your best self, be your best self and, and do everything you can. And I call it winning the day. And then you mm -hmm. go to sleep, you recover, you wake up tomorrow, you win that day. Yesterday is gone. I don't care what you did yesterday. It's gone. Tomorrow is not here. You're not going to be able to, 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 you know, win that million dollars yeah. today or tomorrow, but building that brick by brick and that focus and intention on all the little things each day is how you eventually will get to your goal. Well, man, and even to go in on that, there's two things I want to say quick. So you just, you just brought up a really good point, like go to bed and recover. Dude, this is why, and I'm just guessing on this. So like anybody fact checking, please understand. I'm just, this is an assumption. Um, man, that's why you look at like successful people who have committed. And that's why it must be that their purpose is much different than everybody else. Like, dude, you've seen it as well as I have, right? Like I, I there are days that ever, all of us wake up and it's like, like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this right now. Right. But then you look at it and it's like, well, if there's intention or purpose or anything behind your actions, and it's like, you know why you're doing what you do. It's a game changer, man. Right. Massive. And it's like, dude, we even say it too. Like we believe that every person has, 
their own identity-based purpose. So it's like, what's your purpose in life? So it could be just to help people. Great. But what people often forget, man, it's like, I want a massive house. It's like, great. That's fine. Why though? And in that why, man, is where your power comes, right? It's like, well, shoot, you know what? When I think about it, I, w- I want to host my family every Christmas, every year. And it's like that big house will help with that. When I have people over in the summers, I want them to have the pool experience. I love that. It's like when you start giving those reasons, the actions, like you said, reverse engineering, getting up every day and doing the same thing sometimes over and over again actually starts to become sexy, right? And it's like, this is where I think people, man, lose a lot of their own steam because it's like you can call it intention you can call it purpose man but a lot of people just go through life in zombie mode well and i think it's because they set that goal and then they realize oh i gotta do the same a lot a lot of the same things not necessarily always the same thing sometimes it is the same thing over and over and over and a lot of people they lose their intention they lose their why for why they're doing it they get they, they they find it so monotonous that now their work slips, now their energy slips, now their intention slips, now they're not giving as good of a product or as good of a service. Now the results the client gets slips or or what or if you're an athlete and you're training and you you, you let your intention slip, you're not saying to yourself, why am I going to work my ass off in this training session right now in month three of the summer of five? Like it gets monotonous. But if you remind yourself, I am doing this because it's making me better and it's going to get me a scholarship or it's going to get me that next contract contract or it's going to get me a bump in pay whatever it is if you say that before every single session you will work harder you work harder you work smarter you get better results and now it's just doing that day after day after day after day and and so many people like you said they get into zombie mode and they they yeah. start to go through the motions now you're getting 7 out of 10 instead of 10 out of 10 out of everything you do. I have a massive hand-painted sign from a street artist in my gym. It says, what is your why? I make my guys read it every single day in the off season. And if I see somebody who's like tired or not doing what I need them to do, or they're, I know that they can lift more, they're not pushing it. I'm like, read that effing sign, read yeah. it 10 times. And then I'll ask them, I know what all their whys are because I make them tell me before the off season and I'll get in their ear and I'll say it in their ear, mid set, they're tired, they're sweating, they want to give up. No, this is why you told me you want this. You told me you want this. Do you want this? Prove it. You know, and that's how you get that extra, you know, you jump from the seven to the nine and you do it repeatedly. And now you're at a 10 and you're at a 10 all the time. You get better results. You get better results. You get closer to your goal. I think everybody's curious. What's your why? Uh, it's deep, man. It's deep. I I had a con- so I signed. I was never the best player. I I had to work my ass off to make it to juniors. I had to work my ass off to stay in juniors. I had to work my ass off to get a scholarship. I was one of the last guys on my team to get a scholarship. I got it the second half of my third season. Um, I had to work my ass off to be the captain of my school. I had to work my ass off to sign my first NHL deal, and then I sign it. And that summer, going into my first contract, uh, I got a concussion in the summer. I thought I'd never play hockey again. I missed 15 months, um, lost all my muscle, couldn't work out, couldn't be in a grocery store for more than four minutes, had to see doctors six days a week for six to eight months, thought I'd never play again, Um, wound up turning down almost half a million dollars in insurance money to just try to play again. And I could never be covered for injuries again with my concussion stuff. Um, So... I was ne- I got to play nine more years pro after that, but I was never the same. I was never I was always worried about fighting. I was always worried about driving the middle. I did what I had to do to prolong my career because I was like one more concussion and I'm probably one more bad one like that. And I'm done. Maybe I'm a vegetable. Who knows? Um, so I personally feel like I never got to accomplish what I could have accomplished if I didn't have that injury. And I'm not. Uh, uh, a 300 pound guy who wasn't mm-hmm. good saying, Oh, I could have been in the NHL. Like I was there. I won testing at camp. Like I, I had two goals, assist a fight. I hit a guy through the glass in NHL preseason in seven games, but I just kept getting knocked out. And that kept, you know, you know, I had to change my game and all this stuff. So even though I'm so proud of what I was able to accomplish after that, that concussion and the other ones that happened subsequently after I wound up with 14 in my career, um, I feel like I wasn't, I had my hands tied, my, my hands tied behind my back, my whole career. And I wasn't able to fully get like, have that shot. So like my whole life now, it doesn't matter if I work 99% with elite athletes, pros, college, junior players, but 
I work with Gen Pop. I do business coaching. I do culture coaching with companies here in St. Louis, how to like mm-hmm. team build and stuff like that. And my biggest why in life, my biggest goal in life is to help other people reach their goals because mm-hmm. I feel like I wasn't able to reach my goals with something that was out of my control. And I, I'm, I'm at peace with that. I, you know, like I think a lot of guys, they turn to the bottle, they turn to suicide when something like that happens. Yep. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm not going to let it beat me twice. I'm going to help other people reach their goal, whatever that may be, making money, making the next level, getting the contract, getting a scholarship. And every single time somebody that I work with or somebody that follows me on Instagram says that I help them do something, it, it, it's just, it's everything to me, you know? And so yeah. for me, for me like that, that's, that's everything for me. It's the pusher, man. And it's like, you know, there's, it's so there's a couple things I'll even say about that. Um, it's kind of like, I look at it too, right? It's like the reason I do what I do is because I've fallen before and I know what it's like when people don't know how to help you get back up. And it's like right. been through it. Won't let anybody else. It's like, why do you want to change the way that people do like mental coaching with athletes, it's because I've seen what it's like. It's average. Right. Right. Not great. You can do better. It's, you can do way better. Right. So right. it's like, okay. But even kind of going into that, you know, I think we often forget too, if we instead chased on the days that we don't feel like it, we replaced what we have to do with the feeling you'll get when you accomplish your purpose. Mm life changes, right? Like, it's like, like, I'll be straight, man. There's some times that even for us, it's like, okay, shit, we got to go on a call with this like partner. And it's like, okay, I really don't want to hear it, but I'm going to go on it anyways. And it's like, I could approach it that way. Or it could be like, Hey, you know what, Matt? Remember there was that time that you were in Italy and you were playing soccer and someone couldn't help you up and you were down. You got to take the call. And it's like, bang, it's like, it's like, all right, man. Like, I feel like if to your point, we consciously went through life a little more just with purpose in mind alone, forget fuck vision, man, forget all that. Forget like the big wall, forget it. I'm just saying if you genuinely went through this with a little bit more purpose in mind, I feel like people would do a lot bigger and better things in life. Well, I I totally agree. I think that the whole, um, you know, there's that fine line, like you got to sleep, like the whole grind mentality, grind, 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 grind. Yeah. Yes. Like, okay. If you're doing it stupid, that is too much because you're yep. going to break down. If you don't constantly put the gas back in the car, the car runs out of gas and it stalls on the side of the highway. You can't move anywhere. But like, sure. I think we've gone too far with that. And like people like, oh, don't work that hard. And oh, be, be comfortable. And it's like, well, that's why you're not successful that's why you haven't achieved what you want and ask any high achiever like very like people who make pro sports people who become 10 millionaires people who become 100 millionaires billionaires though that weren't given to them that built something they were never comfortable they put themselves out of their comfort zone all the time and what i've started to do is with my decision making process is i make it black and white I I have a decision and like, let's say it's like you, you know, you don't want to get on that call or like I'm gassed by Friday. I've already trained 400 people in sessions or I'm tired and I'm like, okay, well I could call in and take the day off. Where does that lead me? If I keep doing stuff like that, where does that road lead me? And kind of follow that in your mind. I cancel. Well, that, that'll lose me a couple of clients. That'll lose me money. That'll lose me my gym. That'll lose me. That'll lose me that. Where does that line of thinking take you? Okay. Yes. To the fucking gutter. All right. But if I do stay dedicated, if I do stay disciplined, look where I've come from to where I am now. Well, what about now I have all this momentum behind me and all these people on pushing me and helping me because they believe in me. Well, where does it go if I keep doing the right things? Where does that road take me? So I started to make it a black and white decision making thing. Not not like, oh yeah, well, you know, every now and then you need to take a day off. Well, okay. If I really absolutely have to, I will. But other than that, it's a black and white decision. And when you start to live that way, and like you said, kind of like follow that trajectory, where does that take you? Where does that take you? Well, that road is never good. Self-pity, negative self-talk, not doing what you need to do, not being responsible, that loses your self-respect. That loses your respect from everyone else, which loses confidence. Now you're not able to execute and perform. So it's like that road is never the right road. The easy road is never the right road. 
And man, it's funny you say that because what you're actually doing, like we talked about this before, you're actually using discipline, like a, a framework for discipline based thinking, right? So to be nerdy for a sec, discipline is very simple if you understand human behavior and psychology, right? We all do things to feel a different way when you really think about it, right? You want to make a million dollars or tens of millions or hundreds of millions or billions because it makes you feel a certain way. You want to get a tattoo on your body because it makes you feel a certain way. You want to you know, build a business because you feel a certain way. Point is though, if we start to realize as humans, we do things to always feel a certain way to change how we feel, you'll get more out of yourself. So let's reverse engineer it to your point. Okay. So what do we want to feel as human beings? Well, we all know the human brain is designed for safety, right? Survival. That's the human brain. It's not meant for pushing yourself further or anything. It's if you have a roof over your head, food in your mouth, and you're okay, you're going to stop right there. You have to push yourself for the rest. So it's like, well, how do I do that? Well, discipline-based thinking is very simple. As human beings, we do everything to avoid pain and gain pleasure. That's it. That's the root cause. If you want to be more disciplined, just start to understand how your literal behaviors will cause you pain or pleasure. If you do that, you'll build discipline, right? Like, think about it, man. It's like, well, why do I want a business? Well, I truly want to run my own business because I don't want, like the pain of working for somebody else, piss, like, I don't want that. Never. Right? Can't yeah. do it. Yeah. And it's like, why do you want to challenge yourself with working with elite athletes or elite people? It's like, well, not that anybody's any lesser by any means. It's just because I feel a certain way, there's a pain I'm avoiding when I feel like I'm working with people who aren't as committed that I don't want to experience than when I'm working with more elite people in their own respect. Right. Right. That's the whole reason I, I only work with elite athletes. That's the whole reason. Because they're dedicated. They're coming in and they've got a mindset that like when Jeff pushes me, when, when, I'm going to answer the bell. I'm like, that's what I want. Those are the those are the motherfuckers I want in my gym that are ready to push. You know, like I want to find that limit and I want to go a little bit past that because yeah. nobody nobody's done anything great by being ordinary. Good is the enemy of great, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that when more people think that way, I did a good job. No, I want a great job or, or let's work. Let's build so that when you reflect at night, every single night, reflect on your day, be able to say I was great today. Yeah. And man, we call it here, like at Mala Team, we're like, you have to have old fashioned pride. So like, what is that? It's like, dude, old fashioned pride. My brother and I's grandparents, both sides came from Italy with no money in their pocket at like 17 years old and younger. Wow. Right. And it's like, what did they do? It was post-World War II. The, my one grandmother's mom couldn't come with her at the time because she failed like the physical aspect of it. Right. Where she had like pneumonia. And at the time, if they saw a spot on your lungs still from years before, it was like, you know, due to the lack of innovation in medicine, um, you couldn't come. So she had to wait another 10 years to come. And it's like, that's balls, right? Like that takes balls. And it's like old fashioned pride. It's like both sets of grandparents always told us you could be a hairdresser. You could be a garbage man. You could be a business owner. You could be an athlete. You could be somebody who literally just picks up pencil shavings from the ground. Whatever you do, though, make sure you're the best at it. Uh, old fashioned I, pride. I, right? love, I played in Japan for two years, man. And that is the biggest lesson I took from living there for two years. Everywhere you go, I loved looking at the janitors. I loved it. I loved looking at people who were very low on the, uh, uh, you know, how much money they were making sure. spectrum, you know, and they all took so much pride in it. And it was it was, it was like very, very, very eye opening to me. Like that really? is what they, if I'm going to be a janitor, I'm going to be a best damn janitor in all of Japan. Like that's how everyone in that country thinks. And it's, it's very inspiring. It's very cool. And, you know, I was talking to you before the show about, um, my buddy, Mark, who I, I started yeah. a new podcast with called the give more, be more podcast that's taken off. And dude, he texted me yesterday and this is like that mindset. So he texted me yesterday, 6 43 AM morning, bro. Sif. If you're making $10 million a year, that means you're making $27,397 a day, just in case you ever wondered. So now the question becomes, what would a $27,000 performance look like today for you? Go get it. <laughs> and I was like, hey. hell yeah. <laughs> I got to put in $27,000 day right now, you know, that's performance. It, Dude, it's like, but that that's exactly it. It's like, there's just something that feels complete when you take pride in everything you're doing, right? Like, have you ever looked at those, like even those lifestyle YouTubers, for example, and they're like productivity people 
And they take like, okay, first off, I'm just going to say this about the productivity porn that goes on right now. I'm not a massive person when it comes to, you know, making your entire life productive, because I think there's a limit, like you said, with grinding. But I will give that group of individuals one thing. Dude, have you ever seen how those people keep a journal? Oh, that's my buddy. He journals every single day. Right. And it's like, and dude, it just like the process of how they do it looks nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it looks like it's like shit. Like, in your head, you're in a completely transcended world right now, aren't you? You know what I mean? And it's like they just take so much pride in doing it that, like, they have the best notebook. The pens they select are like pristine. And you know what I mean? Well, and it's just I, that's that know, saying right. how you do anything is how you'll yeah. do everything. Yes. And it's like people who say, oh, it doesn't matter if I just like leave trash at an ice rink in the locker room. No, because if you cheat there, you're going to cheat other you're going to cheat on your girlfriend you're going to cheat on yeah. your wife you're going to cheat at school you're going to cheat in business and guess what you cheat cheaters never win at some point it's going to catch up to you big time like how you do anything is how you will do everything and every successful person says that so yeah. anybody who's not successful or wants to be successful find mentors and listen to what they're saying and yeah. then have the discipline to do that stuff consistently and you know what kills me though, man? Because this is also this. We have to realize too. This is also the world we live in. Like the whole misery loves company, right? Ugh. And it's like, so, bro. Look at. I look at very successful people all the time, and if you hear how some people talk about successful people, it's like, look how stuck up they are. They're not eating. Like when they come to dinner with us, they have to order this food, or they oh. said, "Why would we go to that restaurant?" And it's like, have you ever fucking heard of something called standards? Yeah. Let me introduce them to you, right? I would rather be called a prude for my standards than be t- someone who's just in agreement with what, like, that's what it means, though, doing all things with a certain level of pride in your life, right? And it's like, it's not to be a jerk. It's not to be a, 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 a crap person. It's like, hey, if I'm, this is, this is why people follow other people, right? Like there are so many studies done on leadership that the reason we follow leaders is because they stand by values. They stand by something they believe in, right? Why do you then all of a sudden get inspired by that extremely successful person the next day and start doing everything like them, even though you were just calling them an asshole for their standards less than 24 hours ago? Yeah. They stand by something, yeah. right? And, and, they, it's like, and they stick to it. Over and over and Correct. over, they stick to it. It's it's like if you could be if you could have one word to describe you, consistent is probably if it's consistent in a good way. That's probably the best thing you could possibly be. I mean, we've all yes, heard man. the story of the tortoise and the hare. You yep. know, like consistency wins in the end. Absolutely, and man, even you brought up a good point about cheating. So, like, I'll say it like this: I agree with the principle you're talking about too, and I'm sure you can agree on this point as well. But like, there obviously are extremes for what one little thing and one cheating thing leads to everything. But here's what the underlying principle is with that. If you actually looked at how many times in life you're unfulfilled, I bet you in some way, shape or form, you could tie it back to somehow either cheating the process or not giving your all. 100%. I'd say it's 100% of the time. 100% of the time. Something or 99. Yeah. Like think about it, man. It's like, oh, well, I'm not in the shape I want to be in. It's like, did you do it the right way? Did you did do you put, it at all? Did, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> like, did you cheat it? Or was it one of those like it's always next Monday? Or is it like, hey, I'm not, I'm not, you know, making the money I want? It's like, well, did you really actually set expectation to making that money and actually work backwards to try and figure it out? Or are you kind of just like talking about it? Cause that's what I mean by these people who are also in this whole thing of, oh, I got a vision. It's like, that's great, man. We all do. You know what I mean? We all have a vision in some way. The question becomes, how do you accomplish it? How do you get to it? Are you even doing anything to get there? Yeah. Are you, know you reverse saying? engineering it and creating steps to li- If you stand at the bottom of the stairs, your vision is to get to the top. You go step by step. It's the same thing with a goal in life. Whatever it is, you want to make a million dollars? All right, let's reverse engineer that step by step by step. And now you can check in on your progress. Am I making progress? And then you can reflect, ooh, that didn't work. I should change it a little bit. But if you don't do that, you're flying by the seat of your pants and you have no direction. You're just hoping, hoping yes. to get you nowhere. Yep. And dude, it's funny you say that because like this is one of the last key points I'll touch on even too. It's like 
this is not to discredit how little that thing is that you're chasing even, right? Like, I think people sometimes forget the only way to do something really big in life is to do a bunch of small little things to get there. And it's, it's not trying to, you know, come off cliche, but it's true, right? Everything that you see that's built in front of you, like I always go back to the McDonald's movie. You ever see that movie? Yeah. It's called oh, like yeah. the founder or whatever, right? And like, I know McDonald's isn't good for you, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But my point is how they built that. Fantastic. You see a guy started with one thing. Yeah, he was a bit of a, a, the way that he did it was a little unethical, obviously. Won't deny that. But he started with one location. He started with one burger. He started with one shake. He started with one batch of fries. Then he grew it. He did it for 100 people, 1,000 people, a million people. And then it's like, okay, now the next location. Now next location. It's like, now you look at McDonald's and it's like literally everywhere in the world. Everywhere. Literally everywhere in the world. Almost on every single corner of every single street. And it's everywhere. like, dude, yeah. And it's, I feel like, again, it goes back to the pride piece. My brother and I, obviously being soccer guys, we're watching the World Cup. Did you see what, I think it was Japan. Did you see what they did? What Japan no. did? Oh, the locker Dude, room? they cleaned the locker room. Yeah. Bro. That's that's it's like, nor- that's completely normal. Well, in hockey, that's like the standard, the goal. And it's funny when I first retired and I got into coaching and I'd go into locker rooms where our team would be going in and it would be dirty. I would put that rink, that team, I'd put them on blast. Like this is not what hockey's about. This is not it. And uh, you guys who tell me you want to go to juniors or you want to get a scholarly or you want to play in the show, guess what? Not picking up this tape, none of you are making it. None of you are making it. None of you. Zero of you like you got. And the sooner you learn that how you do anything is how you do everything and pride with everything and put your name behind your actions, right? Like have pride in everything you do. Life starts to get better and it starts to change for, for towards your goals for the better. But if you don't, you stay the same and you're everyone else. Yeah. And man, everything it's funny, dude, because like everything literally comes from that, like relationships, money, success, fame if you want it sports everything like it's like my brother always used to say this as a kid because i got i used to get bullied pretty heavily in in high school right like that's just how it is sometimes and it's like he's like matt have you ever noticed though when you focus on one thing a bunch of different things start to get better it's like man okay yeah you're right (laughs) right and it's like you start to focus on one area and i'll never forget it like grade 10 i saw it i had like a 63 percent in my grade 9 math class went to grade 10 math class just focused on getting better at it and it's like holy shit, like everything in my life. And it wasn't because of the math mark. I had no relevance. What it was though, is like, I started taking pride in how I did my homework. I started focusing a little more. Subconsciously, that started bleeding over into other areas of my life. Man, that's it right there. The bleeding over, it from the subconscious because you earned your self-respect. You earned confidence by, by pride in your homework, being smarter, working harder, actually trying. And then whether you're thinking about it or not, now you go to social studies class and you yeah. used to have a B, but now you got an A because you've gained confidence and you know that that process worked. And then you can start to transfer that over into all these different avenues of your life. That's why all of this stuff that we're talking about, the whole show so far, everything's interconnected. Nothing yep. is in a silo. Yep. And man, it's funny you say that because especially being in like the industries we are, you see it as well as I do, man. Like there's a lot of professionals in the industry that try to make it a silo thing. Yeah. It's when not. really it's, it's the furthest thing from it, man. It's like, I can't tell you how many times in like a one-on-one session that we have with athletes, something about physical comes up. Right. And it's like, did you talk to your coach? No, you should probably do that. Right. And it's like, Dude, it's just, it's little things. It's like, I feel like we always look for such complex shit, man, to like achieving things. And it really isn't like success really is simple. We overcomplicate it though. It's not easy, but it's simple, right? It's like, (laughs) did we just become best friends? Yeah. yeah. Karate in the garage. I say that line all the time. I say success is simple, but it's not easy. Yep. And that's, man, it's like, it's a real thing, dude. It's like, I just... I don't understand the need all the time for us to want to, well, people in general to overcomplicate things when really it's like, even if you're playing like shit sometimes in performance, it's like, well, what is it? What are you not doing? Oh, I'm not doing this super well. Have you worked on that? No. Hmm. You want to start there? Yeah. Right. It's like Einstein. Listen, it's not that hard. 
You just need to make sure you're sticking to it. So it's like, I don't know, dude, it's, it's a very interesting conundrum with all this. Cause I feel like we could just get so much fucking further as a society in general, right? If we just focused on doing things the simple way and you can help so many more people. And it's like, we just often like to ignore the basic principles of things. It's like, how do you make an athlete more resilient? It's like, well, got to get them to commit to something, make sure they're confident in what they do, then make sure they're focused on that consistently. And then they'll build toughness because of it. That's how you do it. It's really, it's, it's simple, but it's like, we want to run around and we want to meditate in the mornings because that's what an influencer said. And then we want to have this, you know, afternoon routine because that's what that influence. It's like, let's consolidate one thing. That's literally, it's like, I'm pretty sure there's a book written on it. Like the rule of one, isn't there something like that? And it's just do that one thing as good as you can. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not trying to dumb down the process. I know usually there's a bunch of different things, but my point is it's really simpler than we think a lot of the time. And it's like from relationships to high performances, like we've had to coach people on a lot of different areas to build resilience in their life. And it's like, one thing always comes back. It's just simple. And it's like, you know, it might not be super sexy in a training session when you show somebody cause it's simple, but it's like, do you see the result though? Yeah, that's, that's the what problem. That did. That's the problem though, because you got influencers and people who have ulterior motives. They're 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 making money off this or that and telling you to do this or that, and like they make everything look sexy. And dude, success is not sexy until you are successful. Yeah, until you have reached like the pinnacle, and that's not a high percentage, right? But like, or whatever your goal is, you know, it could be a lower level goal. That's fine. But like, you don't get the sexiness until you've done the simple over and 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 over. Then you get to be sexy, you know, and the, the social media age has like glamorized and glorified and like people just think it's easy and they just see all the cars and the watches. And it's like, dude, you didn't see that that person was in prison for 10 years, you know, almost died, had to completely change your life, had to do this, 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 and this, this, and this. And now they have the watches and the cars or they're, they went, they lived in the ghetto and they went through all these hard times and then they, they built up businesses and it took them 20 years and now they're successful. Like you don't see that. Nobody shows that, but like, it's that grind that will separate you. Well, man, even how, um, do you believe in like role models, like mentors type of thing? You're right, Dude, right? That's okay. what I do. That's what I do okay. all days. Mentor okay. people. So like one of the things that we talk about, obviously, if you're like one of our principles to build competence, one of the four quadrants of resilience we have, you need to have role models, right? You need to, you need to watch films, study. You need to, you need to study. And it's like, okay, so I'm going to go study this athlete when they were at this point in their career. It's like probably a really bad move because you're not there yet. Right. It's yeah. like, that's okay. It's like, so you look at these guys and it's like, I'll take a, a major one and you know, someone we know of both like a Gary Vaynerchuk, right. When it comes to marketing and everyone's like, I'm going to go do what Gary does right away. It's like, well, did you study him when he was at his starting point where you are? No. Okay. So you could like, I'm not arguing about starting the podcast, but my point is, is like, you need to probably start it the way he did to start to build up to where he is. Right. It's right. very simple, right? It's like, I hear this all the time, man, especially in hockey. Cause I've noticed in hockey, what's funny enough about it, hockey, man, people do a lot of, um, a lot of film work, eh? Like a yeah. lot of film work with yeah. it, which is good. I mean, more predominant. The only one I've seen that does more probably is the NFL, but it's, they're studying a playbook. It's different, right. but like hockey, right? It's like video coaches galore. And, um, what's interesting, man, is I noticed, maybe you can help enlighten me on this, but a lot of them talk about finding a player that, you know, the player wants to be most similar, like trying to match up and so on. And I have one group of them that fall back on that religiously. Right. Then there's another group that fall back on. You should never compare to, you know, somebody who's already at the top of them, blah, blah, blah. What's your take on that? Like genuinely curious what your take is on that. Well, I think it's, it's, it's nuanced because if you're going to break, I mean, you should be watching film of yourself. Like that's what you need to work on. Like that's, that's, that's what everybody should be doing. But then also like study what's being done at the highest level, but then where the good coaches are or what they do is they look at what's being done at the highest level. And then they look at where their client that's in front of them is and then they reverse engineer. Okay, you want to be able to do this skill or be able to shoot off one foot while you're beating a guy wide and shoot short side? Okay, you're nine. You don't yeah. have that. You don't have all of the things, all of the things that go into being able to uh, uh, 
execute that skill. So let's break that down into four basic skills. Now we'll work on level one of A, B, C, and D. And then once you master that, then you move to level two of A, B, C, and D, and then three, and then four. And that might take years, you know, to get there. You don't just go to level 10 if you're starting out. You yeah. go one, to, again, the stair analogy. You don't just hop to the top stair. It's not how it works. I mean, you'd be in the NBA if you could, but like you go step by step by step by step until you reach the pinnacle. Yeah. And man, it's funny you say that too, because like, there's a perfect analogy we have. Um, well, not a net, like this was a real thing. We were working with a, a team that called us in to consult and we were talking about some of their players and they're like, okay, this one player individual you can tell was training with a one-on-one -on -one trainer with his skills for way too long. And it's like, oh, okay. Why do you say that? It's like, well, he can't apply it in the game. And it's like, that right there is going what you're talking about. If you're trying to apply as a nine year old to a fifth, you know, a 25 year old skills, it's like, right. it's, it's, I, I'm a big believer, man, in experiential psychology, right? Like that's our whole thing based on your experiences are where you are now. And if you can realize that all we are experiences, you can move on from depressions, anxieties, all that stuff a lot quicker than the majority who have to root it in something different. Right. And it's like, if you look at it, one of the most impactful things on the mind of a human being is your, your, your environment. And I feel like a lot of the times people don't put enough, you know, we'll call it focus into the environment we're creating for ourselves. Like you talked about it with culture, right. And team building. And it's like, man, that why on your wall in the gym, that's a, that's a big thing for somebody who's building their psychology through experiences, right? right? Telling somebody you can't use the word I can't in your gym is subconsciously building a belief system that will bleed over into the rest of their life. Right. Or life, exactly. Right? And it's like, you look at this shit, dude, and it's just to kind of keep it simple and, and go on it. But I feel like sometimes we forget that everything needs to be contextualized, right? Everything does. Like, I can't come to Jeff if I'm 300 pounds and expect him to train me like he's training a 180 pound player it's yeah. contextualized right it's yeah. like us like we li i literally had a call before this and it was with a, a potential one-on-one -on -one, and they're like man i'm going through all this stuff my confidence is low i've been injured for a year and a half and i'm trying to come back from it it's like are you back from it yet no hmm do you have a plan not really hmm. do you have a timeline do you have a date no the so-and-so i'm working with is it's like brother I can't help you until you go get that solidified. Right. Right. Just do that for, watch how much it's going to take care of anxiety. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? I was actually talking to uh, an MLB pitcher at first form. I was working out at the first form uh, headquarters this morning and I was talking to an MLB pitcher who's towards the end of his career. And um, I brought one of my guys who actually just had a career ending injury. So I brought him up there to kind of cheer him up. It's the best gym you'll ever, it's disgusting. Anybody listening, if you've never heard of first form, look them <laughs> yeah, up Yeah, dude, you post some pretty sick, uh, sick videos dude, with that. Dude, the gym it's in awesome. this place, it's, it's like nothing else. And it's funny, it's like that because their culture is mm -hmm. the best culture you've ever seen in any business anywhere. And that's why they are massive and why they, they grow year over year exponentially. Um, but this pitcher was saying that exact same thing, man. Like, like, you know, he, he, he went through it. He was, he was, t I introduced him to my client who, who mm -hmm. just got the career ending injury. And we were talking about that. And he's like, you know, I've been there. And as and when I was younger and, you know, in the MLB and like do, going through like the injuries and stuff, and I would just get myself all worked up and I wouldn't do the things that I needed to do daily. Cause I was getting anxiety and then that would set me back further. And if I would have just trust the process and just like set dates and set goals and trust the process and done what I need to do daily, I probably would have been able to play more games in the MLB those years that I was injured and come back faster and yada, yada, yada. It's like, dude, you got to do those things. You don't just fly by the seat of your pants. Yeah. And man, it's like, dude, I, I just wish that people had a little bit more of a plan or like at least a little bit more of like just an understanding of where they want to go and put goals down in timelines. Cause it, it really can do a lot for people that start to feel anxious. Like even if you're somebody who's, sick to your stomach bedridden with depression i've seen like we've seen that happen before it's like what's the one thing that gets them out of bed it's like well it's a goal to just literally get out of bed for 10 minutes they don't need to go for a walk that day they just need yeah. to get out of bed and it's like okay tomorrow we're gonna do 15 20 uh, you know what i mean it's like 
it's just again everything simple we make it complex yeah it's, you know I, I actually just um i just took on a probably the the most um what's the word i'm looking for uh i, I took on a client that's probably the most proudest moment in my coaching career that somebody asked me to to work with them it's my old high school hockey coach's father who was just giving given um 12 months to live and wow. he's like and the day the day after he was given that diagnosis my coach called me and said hey i need to have a meeting with you so i sat down with him and he's like he's depressed he's down you know everything you know, gaining weight it's going the wrong way you know, can you just give him a speech? Like, I know you can help him. I know you can get in his head. And then that turned into like, okay, I'm going to train you once a week. He goes to therapy, you know, he it, like specifically for the things he's dealing with and people that are wheelchair bound and all this stuff. But the place he goes to is a bu- is four white walls. It's a bunch of other people who are terminally, terminally ill patients. All Sorry, one thing, one thing, environment. And dude, environment, exactly. And that's what I, and that's what I said to him. And I'm like, look, I'm not saying I can help you live longer. I'm hoping that I can, but like you doing this stuff and you sitting at home and, you know, pouting and, and like you being down on yourself, guess what? I know for a fact that's not, you probably won't even get to 12 months if you keep going the way you're going, right? It's going to go the other way, but a, let's try and make you enjoy your last 12 months and let's, let's fucking extend that. Just because every there have been thousands of people who've been given twelve months to live and they're living five years later, right? Yep. And I'll tell you what, right now, if you keep doing that and you keep giving things half ass and you keep drowning in your sorrows, you will be dead in twelve months. So I brought him in my gym. I asked him who his favorite artists are. I make playlists. We crank the tunes. We play games. I brought in another. Um, I brought in my functional sports medicine doctor so we can tag team it and do everything we can. And our first meeting, this guy barely smiled. Um, barely any emotion. His wife was answering every question for him. Like he wasn't in the room after that first session, the guy's smiling, he's chirping me. We're talking, he's chirping in the group chat that we have the next week, excited (laughs) to come back in. He comes back in. He's, I say, do eight reps. He's like, I'm going to do nine. And it's like, yeah, that's like terminally ill patient. That's what we, that's the difference, you know? And and environment and and changing it up and changing your mindset. It's so freaking powerful. Dude, it's like if we just focused a little more, even in education systems, like if we just focused a little more on consciously creating a good environment, like con- like an actual good environment. Like I'm yes. talking like truly promoting learning, truly yeah. promoting good workplaces, f- fuck safe workplaces. Pro- like I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but my yeah, point is like yeah, if you went in, right, like with an actual you want to create this cool thing. Like everybody talks about Apple, right? And it's like, how, oh my God, Apple was this amazing company. It's like, have you ever listened to or read about what Steve Jobs used to do to create the environment he wanted at Apple? I personally haven't. Right? Amazing. Insane shit. Really? Like, Like everybody talks about this alternate universe he used to live in in his head, right? And alternate reality and all this stuff. And it's like, bro, he created it. Like, have you seen Apple headquarters? It's a fucking ring. Yeah. It's a mat. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's disgusting. It's like, right. if we like, dude, imagine if sports coaches applied that or teachers, it's like to truly create an environment where you want, like Steve did, like some of the best minds in the world to want to come to. It's yeah. like, wow. I, like, one of my main goals with my gym is have everyone want to come back tomorrow. Yeah. Not, I have, to, like, I only train elite athletes, like whether they're 15 or they're making millions of dollars, they're all elite. They're all the best at their age. And, and it gets monotonous, a four month off season, a five month off season, it gets monotonous. My goal is to want them all to be there. I'll murder them. And I want them to smile when they leave and come back tomorrow with a smile on their face, ready to do it again. Because environment, like you said, is it's everything to me. Yeah. It's everything. And I, I, I have cut two people over the 12 years of my company where I said, I can't work with you anymore. You're, I'm sorry. Like we've tried, we tried all these. It wasn't just like randomly, but I said like your you, your mindset, your energy, you're bringing down the room, and I can't have that. I cannot have that affecting everyone else. So I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to find somewhere else to train because that is the environment, the culture in my gym is everything to me, and that drives results. That drives intention. The culture drives intention. Intention drives results. So 
it is, it, it's everything. Like every day guys come in, I shake everybody's hand when they come in. I ask them how they're doing after every single workout. We have a handshake that I do with every single guy. And if I'm talking to a guy and a guy is, is done with his workout, he's got somewhere to be. He's waiting for me to finish that conversation, turn around and do our handshake yeah. before he leaves because it's a culture thing. They want to yes. be there. Bro. It's like, that's, that's a one, right? It's a one. And man, it even goes into it. Like firing a client i'm sorry man but that's such an important thing because it my brother and i were talking about it it's like have you ever looked at it too and been like shit like if i if i take this person's money essentially knowing that there's another level i can help them with and get them to and i'm not doing it because they don't want to it's like the integrity of your brand goes right down the drain 100 percent, 100 percent. right like if you really just looked at things and it's like, okay, so we have our values here at Moleteam, dominate, serve, impact, passion, resolve. And it's like every piece of marketing content, every po podcast, every way we treat a client, every parent we have to call sometimes if they're a younger client to the people, like we're literally letting go of an organization as we speak, right? And it's like, why? It's not to shame anybody, but it's like, hey, brother or sister, here's the truth. You're not going to get the most out of this. I'm not getting the most out of this. We're not getting the most out of this, right? It's no disrespect to you. You need something else. And it's not what I offer. Right. It's right. just what it is. And it's like, if you stay in this, you're going to keep feeling like I'm pulling you to do everything. I'm going to feel like I have to show up to this instead of actually wanting to do it with you. And everything changes, man. I think one of the best things that business owners can do for themselves or brands can do is never be scared to fire a client and leave money on the table. Oh, dude. And when I did that with those two guys, I wasn't making, a, I, I was still a pro hockey player. So I had a good salary, but like in the summer, yeah. I also had goals of the amount of players I wanted to work with the caliber and the amount of money I wanted to generate, um, in, in the summers as well for like starting my business every summer. And, uh, you know, I really could have used that money every week, but I was like, yeah. no, my, the integrity of my business. And also like, you are my advertising. I didn't have social media yeah. back then. So like, when guys would go with their seasons and rip it up, everybody asked, who do you train with? What, what, how are you in such good shape? What, how are you knocking down every puck with your coordination? Blah, blah, blah. I had no advertising. It was your results or my advertising. So if you're yeah. going to come in and give 70% effort and get 70% results, I don't want you because you are hurting yourself and you're hurting what I'm trying to build, an army of savages that achieve their goals. Literally. And it's like, man – a weak link, honestly, in that. And it's not even a weak link like you can't lift as much weight. Like a weak link in somebody with effort changes everything. Yeah, yeah. Changes everything, right? Energy why do vampires. Somebody, yes, man. And it's like you look at top companies. It's like why do some top companies fail when person A isn't doing what he or she needs to do? It's like, well, that's a cancerous-like effect that happens there. Yep. Right? And it's like people always ask, like, how do you create an accountability-based culture or like team that's resilient and it doesn't feel like somebody's chopping each other down. It's like, what are your values? It's like, what do you mean? It's like, well, think about it. So if we want to take on people that want to dominate, serve, be impactful, have passion and resolve, and they don't display those, I can easily say that. Hey man, you're not doing this. These are the types of people we work with. It's put on our website. Hey man, you're not doing that, right? And it's like, it's just an expectation, man. Like we were talking about beforehand how we just got into really hiring our first big amounts of staff. And it's like the number one thing we led with because we were working with an individual too to help us with this is like values. What's the purpose of your company? What's your core ideology? And what are the values you stand by? You need to find a way when you're interviewing people to bring out all of that. Yeah. You have to test them on it, right? And it's like, shit. Like when you think about it that way, it's like, but, and he told us the best way he said it, he's like, but you don't have to worry about it, man. Like you've been doing this with all the athletes you work with. Think of the guys that stuck with you or the gals that stuck with you for six, seven years, right? It's like, why is it? Values. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they know what you bring to the table every single day consistently. Yep. hundred percent, man. Even with us sitting here, it's like, okay, uh, th we'll finish with this, but like, why are we creating this partnership together? Why are we doing this together? It's like, well, in your own way, man, and the way I see it, Jeff dominates. He serves people. He impacts them. He's passionate. And he has resolve. He figures it out. Oh, I can partner with that guy. Right. Right. And because you have that set of ethics or, or, or values, you know 
to look at those and then go, yeah. okay, yeah. Can we? But if you don't, you don't know who you're working with. You don't know who you're getting yeah. in bed with. You don't know who you're going to uh, pay to train you to try and achieve your goal, whether that's in business or sports or life yes, or whatever it is. So well, somebody doesn't have those. Like how, even, how can they, they measure think them? relationships though, man. Like, so I recently got married a, a month, a couple months ago. Right. And it's Woo! like, okay. Yeah. Kudos. Right. And it's like, okay. Dated her for a while, married her. It's like, well, why is it? It's like, well, in her own respect, she actually does dominate in her own way. Now, she might not be as intense as I am, but as a wedding and event planner for, you know, pretty high end corporations and, cor- and, and people, yes, yeah, she does. She sets the tone. Okay, cool. She serves people. Genuinely, when I've never seen somebody come into a situation and try and do more for another person before. It's like, okay, she serves people. She impacts people. Everybody's walking away talking about how Ashley says great things. She has passion for what she does. She has resolve. It's like, I know why I can be with this person. Know what I mean? It's like, it. bro, if you like, I think people don't realize if you could just clearly define your values in anything that you're doing in life, what you really value to make that project go, man, everything can change. But again, right from the starting point of our podcast, and we'll wrap up on this, it starts with intention right? It starts with purpose. It starts with consciously going through things. It's wanting to create something in front of yourself and actually going to do it. Reverse engineering. It's a great way to, it's just, I don't know, man. I just wish we could riff on this for hours on end, but (laughs) this is why we're coming up with a partnership. So quick announcement. We are partnering with Jeff. Um, Jeff's going to be providing the physical. We're going to be providing the mental. We'll have an announcement on that later in the week, I believe to kind of outline that in full, but long story short, um, at Molotium, we have probably only about a handful of partners. The reason we're deciding to do so with Jeff for anybody tuning in is simply because we believe in what he does. He's backed by what he does. The guy has results. He has people that he works with that are consistent. And more importantly, he walks and talks it consistently, right? He does everything he needs to do on a daily basis. We feel a pride in partnering with a guy like him. I know it's reciprocated and we can't wait to announce it in the upcoming week. Jeff, last thoughts you want to leave people with, go for it. Thanks, brother. I'm I'm so excited for the partnership and honored. And, you know, I've had so many of my guys sent so many of guys to work with you. And mm-hmm. the reason I'm also down to partner is because you've helped all of them. And I believe in what you do truly. And it has worked. And I wish it I wish I would have known you when I was playing. I really, really do. <laughs> Likewise. I, I, yeah, you know, and I'll leave uh, I'll leave anybody listening to this right now. Like if you heard anything today, live with intention and something we've been saying on our on our podcast, the Give More Be More Cup podcast. If you think it, do it. You think it right away, do it and do it with intention and your life will change. Love it. So everybody stay resilient. We'll see you all in the next one.